Peter said this stuff happens all the time in Washington. If so, why are we talking about it now? Is it because of Boston? Uh, well, it most certainly is because of Boston. Uh, it, and when an event like Boston happens, everyone is at a heightened level of sensitivity and is much more concerned about any potential indicators of threat than they normally are. And secondly, in this case, and rather unusually, the administration elected to release information about at least the letter to the White House. The, the letter to the Senate would have been released by the Senate. So in that context, people connect the dots and begin thinking, not only is there a plot to attack government offices with a biological toxin, but it may possibly be connected to an ongoing security situation which manifested for the first time on Monday in Boston. So given uh, what we heard from it in, in the Carney press conference, what sort of clues did you hear about who might be behind all of this? Well, uh, Jay Carney was at pains to say basically nothing and to refer all the questions to the FBI. Uh, and that was clearly his talking point uh, when he went out. So he wouldn't speculate at all about what, who might have done this or whether it was domestic or foreign. But he did sort of something which I thought as a former White House staffer was sort of interesting, which he gave the names of all the attendees uh, in the Oval Office meeting this morning with President Obama. And interestingly, all the names that he listed were the people on his domestic security team. It omitted the people who are responsible for foreign policy and foreign intelligence, like the Secretary of State, the Director of National Intelligence, or the Director of CIA. It was all the domestic officials. Uh, and so this is, again, speculative, but given how little the administration is giving us about its theories of this case, I think it suggests that the administration, at least, is predominantly focused on a theory that says this was a domestic attack. Richard, would that square with what your other sources are telling you, that this is a domestic or homegrown incident versus something with foreign ties? Uh, most people who are, who are, who've been ex have had experience with cases like this are very careful about making predictions. And so what I said this morning with Tom Keene is that there's essentially a speculative lean towards domestic. And there's no hard evidence at this time, and we're ready for evidence to emerge that, that rebuts that theory. But I'd say the smart money now leans very slightly towards an attack of domestic origin and execution. Now, Richard, let's get back to the suspicious mail. What kinds of technology is used to scan letters at the White House? Um, well, it's several different kinds. They're x-rayed routinely, and then they're swabbed looking uh, with very simple assays that are looking for the presence of different kinds of substances, chemical compounds principally. Uh, so, for instance, they will look for the chemical compounds most often uh, appearing in explosives, and in this case, they look for the protein uh, which uh, creates ricin. That protein is a naturally occurring substance. It, it, it exists in nature in castor beans, uh, and there's a simple uh, assay, basically a piece of paper, which when put next to the protein will turn color and indicate that as to the first order the presence of the protein. Well, if that indicates it's not a definitive diagnosis, the substance is then brought to the FBI laboratory or an FBI certified laboratory uh, for further uh, detailed scientific and genomic analysis. So how many different layers, how many different steps are we talking about here before the mail actually reaches its purported intended destination? It's a good question. It will depend on the, how big is it a parcel, it is a letter, who's it sent to. If it is to the west wing of the office, frankly, they don't get very much mail in there. Most of the letters to the president are answered off-site by, by a letter writing office that, that responds on his behalf. I worked in the west wing uh, for three and a half years, would very rarely receive uh, a, a letter. Uh, when it is, it usually had already been opened and sometimes was sort of singed uh, by the x-ray technology that, that the screeners were using. It's quite common for mail to come in uh, to the West Wing. So even after this scanning process, does the president ever actually open his own mail? I doubt it very much. I mean, I don't know what he does uh, with stuff that his family gets or he may do at another facility, but I, I don't think the Secret Service are going to allow the president or the president-elect or even one of the leading contenders in the presidential election to open their own mail unscreened. Does he, does he read his own mail, Richard? It's a good question. It's sort of up to him. Uh, you know, the Secret Service and his staff will configure it any way he wants. But in general, uh, uh, so I can't speak for his personal uh, proclivities. It may be that uh, there are some people he wants to receive it from and he instructs his staff to permit that and most others he doesn't. But, uh, you know, this is, the mail is a known threat vector for high officials in government offices. There have been multiple attempts to attack uh, office buildings via the mail system and so places with a heightened level of security routinely screen and really keep the mail away uh, from the most sensitive locations and recipients.